When you start views, you are presented with an empty graph and three panels, the editing, formatting and properties panels. These panels can be moved out and over to the right or to the top or floated. I'm going to keep them on the left. The default graph, graph one, is embedded in a page which is embedded in a document. And the default graph consists of X and Y axes. And we can zoom in and out of the graph using the zoom functions icon. The editing panel allows us to add or remove elements to the graph, such as a bar chart. For now, I'll remove it. The formatting panel allows us to format the various elements. For the graph, this consists of items such as the margin size. For an axis, this includes items such as color and style, and the font and font size of the axis and the tick labels, and the color and style and other matters of the major and minor ticks, and also of their grid lines. The properties panel allows you to set the characteristics of an element. For an axis, this includes items such as a label for the axis and the minimum and maximum value for the axis. The easiest way to import data into views is to enter it into a spreadsheet with the variables in columns and the variable names in the first row. And to save the sheet in CSV or comma separated values format. This spreadsheet contains the number of high altitude tree species in six South American countries that were assessed using the IUCN Red List categories and criteria. And I want to plot a bar chart of this data. There are two additional variables, X position containing the values one through to six and Y position containing the value 0 0.1 for each row. These two variables are to help us with the plot as we will see in a moment. To import the data into views, data, import. Browse to the location where the file has been saved. Mine is called fig2.csv. Open. We can see that by default, viewers will look in the first row for the variable names and it's found them. Import, close. If you want to be sure that the data is imported, data, editor, and we can see and check the data. Close. I'm going to first set the size of the document. As this is going to contain only one page and only one graph, and I want the graph to have a height and width of 79 millimeters, I will set the width and height to be 7.94 centimeters. And these values, oops, let me set that to centimeters. And these values propagate through to the page. To plot a bar chart, select graph one, click the bar chart icon. The first thing I need to do is to add the data to the graph. So select the bar and in properties lengths, choose the variable that contains the bar lengths, which is species per country. I'm going to zoom in to the graph and I'm going to save it as we go along. I'm going to simply save it on my desktop and call it Fig2. To hide the numbers on the x-axis, select it and in the formatting panel, tick labels, enable hide. They've gone. To add the country names, add a text label element to graph one. Select graph one, text label, and I need to specify in property as label, the variable that contains these, the text labels, countries. Now, we need to position these labels correctly. For, under pro, in the properties panel, for, the X, for X positions, choose my X position variable, that was one through to six, my Y position variable, which, contain, which contains 0 0.1 for each row. And as these values want to be on, need to be on an axis, change the position mode to axes. So we can see there the country names, but 
we need to format the correct, them correctly. So on the formatting panel, I want the horizontal alignment to be right, the vertical alignment to be top, and I'm going to set an angle of 315 degrees so that we can easily read the labels. To specify the font, use the formatting panel, text, and I want Arial, which is a sans serif font, and I think 10 points will be a fine size. To add a y-axis label, select the y-axis and add a label in the label field of the properties tab. Number of species. And in the formatting panel, we can specify the font of the label. I'll choose Arial again and a size of 10 point. And we'll also use the same font for the tick labels. Arial. Point. Now the plot is too busy with all of these major and minor ticks, so using the formatting panel I'm going to hide the major and minor ticks on the x-axis, major ticks hide, minor ticks hide. I'm also going to hide the minor ticks on the y-axis, hide. But I want to have grid lines on the major ticks of the y-axis. So grid lines, and by default, grid lines are hidden. So I simply need to unhide them. I'll accept a width of 0.5 of a point, but I want the style to be solid. Now I want the figure to be at its maximum size within the space available. At the moment, there's a lot of white space around my figure. So select graph one, and in the formatting panel, select, I'm going to change the values of the margins. I think a left-hand margin of 1.1 centimeter will be okay, and a bottom margin of 1.35. And I'm going to set the right and the top margins to be just point 0.02 of a centimetre, which is 0.2, of course, 0.2 of a millimetre, giving me just a small white space all the way around. The figure's complete, and now I need to export it. I want to do so in scalar vector graphic format. So, export to graphics formats, select SVG, browse to where you want the file to be. I want it to be on the desktop. I'll call it figure two and save. Export, close. Let's have a look at it and see how it looks. It looks fine. Check a background indicates that the area outside the graph box will take on the color of whatever background is used. This will normally be white. Finally, let's save our completed file and close it. If we reopen the file, the views file, let's zoom in, you'll see that the figure and data have been saved together. So you could use this file as the basis of a new figure, or you could plot a bar chart of the same size and style, but with different data.